Welcome to the Bath, Fizz and Foam YouTube channel. My name is Robin French Smith, and today we're gonna talk about the Kata Ice Cream Cone Mold. So the Kata Ice Cream Cone Mold is one of those molds that from the very beginning, I have been asked to do tutorials for it. And I did have, um, it might've been on my other channel with my other business, which I didn't even bother to grow that much. Uh, but I did used to have like a quick 30 second tutorial on how to use this mold. And that was really when I was like still trying to figure out how to do these mold tutorials. You know, do I make them long? Do I make them short? I make them, I don't know. I try to make them like 15 minutes ish now these days. Maybe that's too long for you guys. Um, maybe it's just the right amount. I don't know. I try to show lots of different ways to use the mold whenever I am doing these tutorials. So I hope that it helps, but I did used to have a video, okay? And it was really short and it just kind of showed like, here you go, bloop. <laughs> And so I wanted to expand on that. Not only are we using ice cream cone molds this month in Patreon, but also just in general, I wanted to give a better demonstration of how to use the mold and maybe talk about things that you shouldn't do if you're trying to use this mold. So, you know, I just wanted to kind of hit it again. And here we are, we're doing it. And I hope that it helps if you guys have been struggling with it. So today I am working with one of our low humidity recipes that is on our website, bathfizzandfoam.com. And that is because my humidity is below 50% right now. Usually where I live, my humidity is always really high, like 70, 80% humidity outside. And even in my workroom, especially if I don't empty my dehumidifier or if I'm not staying on top of it. So it's not very, often that I do have to use a low humidity recipe, but as my weather turns to winter, it does get a little bit drier here. And in the past, I did always use the high humidity recipe that we have and I would have to tweak it, but it wasn't perfect. So that is one of the things I like about our low humidity trio. And there are three options in there for you guys if you don't like my favorite one. Uh, we had tons of testers work with us to test it Anyway, that's, look, it just, the colors went desaturated. We're gonna talk about what not to do. Right now, right here, right now. Number one, don't do that. <laughs> I think for a lot of, and, and I put three embeds in there. I packed them real close together and I packed them right at the stem, like where the stem and the base kind of meet and it broke, right? So I think that, I don't know if that's when the, some of the things that people are doing when they use this mold, but I do think that it is a common kind of idea that, okay, the stem or the handle, whatever is long. So I need to press that in and pack it to make sure that it gets filled all the way. And I would say that that's probably a good idea unless you're including embeds, in which case the Pack, like when you're packing it, you're probably creating weak spots where the mold is breaking, like where the embeds were was where mine broke. And also, so I think it was just a combination of me packing it and adding embeds. Now through the course of this, the rest of this video, I make six of these cone bath bombs and I am re able to reuse that mix that, um, that got broken the first time. So you are gonna be able to see me reuse that mix and see that it's fine. But what I did for this first successful one is I just added one embed. So if you have a if you have a bath bomb mold that you're trying to work with and it's not working with you, I, I would encourage you to like, the first thing to do is to pull back a little bit. Like if you're trying to load it up with like five or six embeds, then you might need to pull back and say like, okay, can I make it work with just one embed? And if you can, then okay, can I make it work with just two embeds, which is what I'm doing here. And, um, and cause you know, you don't have to use the exact same techniques as I do. I like my mix light and fluffy. I don't really like to pack it, but what I'm saying is it's always a good idea to like reevaluate what you're doing and to make sure that like your, your process isn't part of the problem. So, because there's so many factors that come into play with whether or not a mold works. 
So yeah, I filled it up light and fluffy. This time I'm trying two embeds. I just give it one table press. I don't really use a lot of strength to get that mold um, packed. And that's one of the things I think I say a lot. I don't know if I say it in these videos, but I know I definitely say it in my lives, is that you don't have to sit there and pack it. You don't have to stand on the mold. You could use, um, I know some people use like an arbor press, which is like an apple press or something, like a can. Oh, I don't know what it is, but I know people talk about it and they use it. And you could, you could definitely use that, especially if you have like some issues with strength or carpal tunnel, something like that. But you really don't need that much strength to make these molds work for you. They are meant to work with just your normal human strength so you don't have to have like massive amounts of bodybuilder strength to make this work for you I am breaking up that mix up there and that is my dump bucket so <laughs> I love that term that's a term that Amanda, uh, the, uh, the other owner of Bath, Fizz, and Foam, do you know that we have two people who run this thing? We do, by the way. Um, Amanda, she coined the term dump bucket, and I love that. So it is a good idea to keep a dump bucket on the side, especially if you're working with embeds, and I want these bath bombs to be as pure white as possible. And so when one of them breaks, what happens is there's little tiny flecks of embed now that is in that mix up at the top. And I don't really want that to mix into the rest of my bath bomb mix because I want to get as many of them to be white as I can. So to prevent that kind of contaminated mix, I guess, from getting into the rest of my bath bomb mix, I have my dump bucket. And normally I will kind of pack, um, that janky mix <laughs> into the interior of my bath bomb and kind of hide it away. It's a little bit harder to do with this mold because the entire mold is gonna be the outside edge of it. But it's especially useful if you have, you know, kind of thicker molds and you can kind of tuck that away and uh, kind of keep it hidden. So as I flip the bath bomb over, I'm giving it just a few taps and I'm tapping along the bottom edge of the mold and you'll see it better from this point of view and the reason I'm doing that is to release the suction that exists between the bath bomb and the mold itself. Now I'm not tapping at the top, I'm tapping at the bottom to help break that seal down there and then that will release it through the rest of the mold. And I want, I'm looking for, I'm listening for a hollow sound and I don't really know how else to describe it. If you start um, making bath bombs, you'll kind of hear the sound, there's like a shift in the sound from when you're tapping it to when the bath bomb releases, it's very subtle. And this time I used three embeds. I'm getting very adventurous with this mold. I just wanted to make sure that it could work. So um, I tried it with one, I tried it with two, and now we are trying it with three. I gave it just one little table press. Probably the hand, like the hand squeezing that I'm doing is probably enough, but I just wanna give it one table press just to be sure. And then I am pushing the mold up through the sleeve that is the outside part of the bath bomb. And then I'm gonna give it some taps all the way around just to start to break the section. And also I'm gonna be really honest with you, it helps to knock off some of the extra dust that's on the bath bomb mold and helps me to kind of make a slightly less mess, like. It's still, bath bombs are messy, but it's like slightly less messy when I do that. So that's one of the reasons I do that. I'm making sure that I'm grabbing that edge of the bath bomb as I'm flipping it over because I don't want it to just fall out. Um, sometimes they do just fall out and that's cool if that's what you want. But if you want to control it coming out, um, I hold that edge as it's coming out. And then I was lifting straight up because I don't want to chip or dent the side of that cone. And now we're just gonna throw the rest of that mix in there. I have four good ones and we will let the rest of them be um, a little bit, have, you know, have a little couple flecks of embed mix in there. And honestly, when they were done, I really couldn't notice it that bad, but it is just something that, it's just like a habit that I do. So <laughs> you don't have to do it, it's just something that I do. And I am breaking up the chunks that were in there because you know I did form this into a bath bomb. So I wanna make sure that my mix is light and fluffy. 
So I was breaking up the chunks and then sticking one embed in. And I think another thing that's important is the very first one I made, I grouped all three of my embeds together. And for the rest of the bath bombs that I make with this cone mold, all the ones that are successful, I make sure that there is a layer of bath bomb dust between the embeds. So I will put an embed, I will add a little bath bomb mix. Put an embed, add a little bath bomb mix, put an embed, add a little bath bomb mix. <laughs> Uh, that way I'm not running the risk that the embeds are creating kind of a dry area where the mix isn't able to fuse and form together as a bath bomb because the embeds are dry, but the bath bomb mix is damp. It's not wet, but it's damp. I mean, you saw me add binder at the beginning. Um, so it's not, you know, super wet, but it's wetter than the embeds. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. And I think that that pretty much covers how to use, or how I use this mold. I don't know if it's the only way to use this mold, but it's how I use this mold. And like I said earlier, you're gonna see right here where I'm tapping it, I'm tapping it kind of right on that bottom edge because that's where I want that section to break. And if I feel any resistance as I go to pull the mold up away from the bath bomb, if I feel any resistance, I am, not continuing to pull up. I'm giving it some more taps and gently turning it. Now you can't turn every bath bomb mold as you're working with it. Sometimes when you turn them and it's on the table like that, they will break, especially if you have something like a, a bombshell mold. Um, but for this mold, it's fine. It didn't break it. But you know, if you find that when you're turning it on the table, it's breaking it, then you know, it's probably worth changing that. So there's always gonna be most bath bomb molds are gonna have the same techniques. So sometimes on these videos, I'm like, do they really want another video of how to do this? And you know, sometimes you guys say, yes, you do. And I, okay, I'll do it for you. But a lot of times this is, it, those are the same techniques. We are just moderating, moderating. We are just modulating, no. We're doing something, I don't know what the word is, but we're doing something, modifying, that's what it is. <laughs> Gosh, we're modifying it for each mold, kind of on a case by case basis. So I think another thing with this mold, um, I've had this particular mold for a few years now, and I did notice, you can see right there, it's a little bit tight for me to push it through that sleeve. And I did make another batch after this, and I did go ahead and get a piece of very, very fine sandpaper. And I just kind of sanded the inside of that sleeve and then it was that thick pe uh, thick press piece on the very bottom edge of it was had some slight swelling just because the the mold is old I've had it for several years uh, probably three years now and over time it's been get, it's gotten used a lot it's gotten washed there's been times I've been lazy and I just left bath ball mix on it and didn't like clean it off the way I should have. And so, it, you know, they can develop like little imperfections or burrs that catch and as you're trying to push the bath bomb through the mold. So that's just another thing. You would wanna use a very light sandpaper and gently, gently sand it if you have problems where your mold is catching. And once again, just like the chunk of dust mold, uh, bath bombs were all white and I apologize for that. I apologize again that these are all white. I know it's not quite as visually interesting to watch, but the reason is that I was making these for our Patreon make along this month. And I wanna thank our Patreon donors so, so much. Their names are gonna be scrolling across the screen right now as we speak. These are all of our Patreon donors for the month of December. And uh, this month we are doing some really cute make along projects that involve ice cream cones. So I'm showing them how to create these cute little characters using ice cream cone molds and um, then different you know tops and designs on it so if you're interested in that i will leave a link in the description for our patreon you could also come visit us at bathfizzandfoam.com or come to our facebook group bath and foam bath bomb and bubble bar support group we are a community of friendly helpful kind makers and we would love to see you there and as always happy making <laughs>